Rock Creek Station is a true saga of the old American West. A shooting incident involving James Butler Hickok, a man who later became known as Wild Bill Hickok, kept this stop along the Overland and Pony Express Trail from fading into obscurity. Rock Creek Station is located about six miles southeast of Fairbury, Nebraska. It was established in 1857 by two brothers, S.C. and Newton Glenn. The station evolved from a small cabin, lean-to and barn, into a road ranch that catered to pioneers, stages and freight lines. The lean-to was set up as a primitive store where hay, grain and supplies could be bought, sold or traded. In the spring of 1859, David McCandless hears disappointing reports of gold mining efforts in Colorado. He abandons his prospecting dream and purchases Rock Creek Station. He develops the property, including a toll bridge across the crude Rock Ford. The fee is 10 to 50 cents, depending on the traveler's ability to pay. In 1860, McCandless rents the East Ranch to Russell, Majors, and Waddell, owners of the Overland Stage Company and founders of the Pony Express. The Pony Express ran a 2,000-mile route from St. Joseph, Missouri to Sacramento, California. Rock Creek was Pony Express Station No. 2 in Nebraska. The Overland Company hired Horace Wellman as station keeper, J.W. Doc Brink as a stock tender, and James Butler Hickok as a stable hand. Later, the Overland Company buys the station from McCandless, but soon falls behind in payment installments. Horace, I come to get my payment for the station. The floundering company kept telling McCandless the money would be forthcoming. I don't have your money. But did not deliver upon the promise. On July 12, 1861, David McCandless, accompanied by his 12-year-old son, Monroe, went to discuss the mortgage situation with Wellman. What do you want? I want to talk with Horace. What do you want to talk to him about? Come to get my money. He doesn't want to talk to you. I don't do business with women. I only do business with men. There are various accounts of the ensuing no. tragedy. Jim, haven't we been friends here all along? Yeah. Give me a drink of water? Yeah. Dime novelist picked up on the event. Colonel Ward Nichols, a Harper's Magazine writer, spun a yarn of Hickok single-handedly defeating 10 armed men despite being sorely wounded himself. The generally accepted truth is that McCandless demanded full payment or the station would be repossessed. Station agent Wellman hides behind his wife, refusing to come out and discuss the matter. Hickok comes to the doorway, which angers McCandless further. Now, Jim, haven't we been friends here all along? Yeah. Give me a drink of water? Yeah. Hickok slips behind a curtain that divides the cabin. Now, Jim, you got a problem. You come out here and fight fair like Instead, a man. Instead, Hickok takes aim and shoots an unarmed McCandless through the heart. Hearing the shot, McCandless's hired men, James Wood and James Gordon, arrive from the barn. Hickok steps into the doorway and wounds each man with a pistol. Woods runs around the side of the house and is killed with a grub hoe to the head, presumably wielded by Wellman. Gordon tries to escape, but is tracked down by a dog and then finished off with a load of buckshot, presumably by Doc Brink. Get Monroe! Young Monroe dodges a swing of the hoe Kill him all! and escapes through a brushy oh, ravine. Wellman, Brink, and Hickok are arrested and tried for murder in Beatrice. In a trial that lasts under 30 minutes, they are acquitted after pleading self-defense. Young Monroe claims his father and the other two men were unarmed, but he was not allowed to testify. The incident glorified Wild Bill Hickok and he became a legendary lawman, scout, and card-playing maverick. At the age of 39, Hickok met his end August 2nd of 1876 when Jack McCall shot him in the back of the head. Hickok was playing poker in Deadwood, South Dakota's number 10 saloon. At the time, Hickok held a pair of black aces and eights, a deal that has been since known as the dead man's hand. After the incident, the next decade saw traffic through Rock Creek Station taper off as wagons used the shorter Nebraska City to Fort Kearney route or the road out of Council Bluffs, Omaha. The 1869 completion of the Transcontinental Railroad further ended the importance of road ranches like Rock Creek Station. A branch of railroad was built through the Rock Creek area between 1879 and 1881.
During that time, a box containing the remains of David McCandless and his cousin James Wood was moved to the Fairbury Cemetery. The remains of James Gordon have never been located. Rock Creek Station was established in 1857, but the trail of westward expansion through this vicinity ran from 1842 to 1870. In June 1842, Scout Kit Carson led John C. Fremont and a company of 28 men through this area on an expedition to map a trail to the Oregon Territory. While camped along Rock Creek, the group marked their presence on a sandstone bluff. This photo by local resident M. Garfield McCrate was taken in the 1930s. For years after, numerous travelers and area residents added their names. Eventually, the carving location became known as Quivera Park, a popular gathering spot. After decades of weatherization and occasional flooding, the landmark was undercut by the water and washed away down the creek. A bronze plaque replicating the etchings is on display in the parking island in front of the park's visitor center. Generations of private landowners farmed portions of the Rock Creek property, but also recognized the historical significance of details like the Overland Trail ruts. These surviving swales and prairie settings inspired periodic and elaborate pageants and picnics. Nebraska Game and Parks Director Mel Steen attended one of these events and led an effort to acquire and preserve the historical site. The actual development of Rock Creek Station as a state historical park began in 1980. The property was excavated to determine building locations. After the visitor center was completed, the park's official opening and dedication took place on September 1, 1984. Astronaut Bruce McCandless, the great-great-grandson of David McCandless, was on hand for the ceremony. I'd like to express our appreciation to the state of Nebraska, to the Game and Parks Commission, and to the Burlington Northern Railroad for making possible and for pursuing the development and the dedication of this Rock Creek State Historical Park. Reconstruction of Rock Creek Station is based on this 1860 photograph. The station blueprint involves two cabins, a bunkhouse, barn, toll bridge structure, and small post office, each with a story to be told. Historical interpretation continues with the displays and period artifacts inside the park's visitor center. Without intruding on the historic settings, an adjacent modern campground offers amenities like electricity, showers, dump station, and a designated area for campers to stay with their own horses. Six miles of hiking and equestrian trail lace the park, and naturalists enjoy the mix of woodland and native prairie. The park is home to a rich diversity of plant and animal life. Flowering species provide a change of scene from spring to fall. The native grasses such as Big and Little Blue Stem wave in the breeze. Cottonwood, oak and walnut trees shadow ravines, creeks, and provide habitat for a variety of wildlife. Through the seasons, at least 70 bird species are commonly observed, and many others have been documented. Rock Creek Station State Historical Park is 400 acres of fascinating history, scenic beauty, and outdoor recreation for all seasons.